for watching Rackspace, the number one managed cloud company. My name's Alan Bush, and we're broadcasting live from the castle, our headquarters here in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, we are doing our weekly live stream, Office Hours, and uh, today we're talking about Google and uh, SSL certificates and how they are changing it and what you can do to make sure that your website complies with them. Uh, this is something that I don't know anything about, so I brought in a special guest, uh, Suzanne Aldrich from Cloudflare, uh, to talk to us. Those of you that are watching on uh, ohpodcast.com or on YouTube, you're going to see Suzanne. Uh, but if you're uh, just watching on Facebook or Periscope, hey, how you doing? And uh, you'll just hear her voice. So uh, if you're if you're watching and see me uh, uh, reacting to somebody that's not there, it's Suzanne. So let's say hi to Suzanne. How you doing, Suzanne? I'm doing pretty well, Alan. Nice to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you. This is your second time on the show. Uh, you, we are, we're very glad to have you back. And um, you uh, are one of our friends at Cloudflare. Tell us a little bit about what you do at Cloudflare. Sure. I'm a solutions engineer at Cloudflare, and I help uh, customers of ours, enterprise customers, learn all about our services and then um, go ahead and get them onboarded. We provide a very large reverse proxy system over mm -hmm. the Internet that is protecting about 4 million websites a day uh, using our WAF services, DDoS protection. And um, in, in this discussion, I think what's important is TLS. We do, uh, we do TLS encryption for our customers as well. Yeah, and that's one of the things that we talked about um, uh, last time, or, or at least we mentioned a little bit, is the, is the way that you've been able to set up a you know a, a encryption for everybody, right? And and make that kind of uh, the default for everybody. You know, it's it's becoming a kind of a mission of the web. It's not just us. Uh, companies yeah. like Cloudflare um, are in you know in conjunction with companies like Google. We're mm -hmm. all in this movement for HTTPS everywhere. And um, this is this is exactly why this this particular discussion is so important to, to cover. Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about. And just want to mention anybody that's watching out there, Facebook, Periscope, YouTube, wherever you are, we'd love to hear from you. I know that we have a lot of customers that have questions so this video will be beneficial for everybody that they can they can you know watch down the road and make sure that they're in compliance but if you're watching right now and have a question we've got an expert right here with us right now that's that's uh, ready to talk to you about that so uh, drop your questions into Facebook into Periscope into YouTube wherever you're watching and we'd be happy to answer them for you right here live on the show so um, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and get in and and, um, and start to talk about uh, you know, making changes to uh, to the SSL. So let's talk about SSL in general, right? So make sure everybody's on the same page. That's what we're talking about when you say HTTPS everywhere is that little green padlock up in the corner of your browser, right? That's right. The little green mythical padlock. How do you how do you make it green? Is a question that is important for both uh, people who are visiting websites that are possibly handling important information, or maybe even things you think are unimportant. Uh, people are starting to use TLS across the board for a lot of reasons. Yeah. And um, just to clarify, SSL, TLS, what, what's the difference? Um, they're they're kind the difference? of the, they're, they're kind of the same, but kind of different. SSL is a secure sockets layer, and that's uh, what we were using up until a certain point before um, it got standardized under the TLS uh, protocol. And what that does, um, that allows us to uh, negotiate connections between two different endpoints. So your browser and uh, a website. They mm -hmm. can, uh, look, you know, you can go to it just over plain text, or you can go to it over, over HTTPS. Mm -hmm. And when you use HTTPS, uh, they should have a certificate installed. And what these certificates do is allow you to verify: Is this truly the website that I want to go to? Um, have they been verified by some kind of authority that that indeed this is uh, the the domain of the certificate should match? Um, the actual uh, people who've requested the certificate. And there's actually a few different kinds of certificates you can purchase. Um, and these all allow for this, this kind of encrypted communication between uh, people who are visiting websites and, uh, on, and their browsers right. and the actual website. Yeah, and, and one other thing I want to point out too um, is that uh, encryption is definitely one aspect of it, but we're also talking about... Um, verification that it is the proper, that it's actually who you're talking to, right? That's right. Um, with with regard to something like the top of our discussion, SHA-256 SHA and SHA-1, mm -hmm. uh, these are hashing algorithms. Uh, what they do is they take something and perform a one-way hash, so there's no way to go back. It's one way, and mm -hmm. at the end of this process you get um, a series of these uh, you know, digits and numbers, uh, hexadecimal values of a particular length, and um, the idea is that you can utilize this output to verify 
that um, whoever made this output actually possessed a private key, part of the key pair that's necessary in order to do encryption. Great. Yeah, that's that's absolutely what you want to do. You want to, I mean, it's, it's that man in the middle attack that you want to avoid, right? You don't want people to be able to uh, impersonate you. So um, that's, exactly. that's another added benefit of that. Great. So, exactly. um, all right. Well, so, so that's kind of what we're talking about today. Now, up until, uh, I don't know, about a year ago or so, things were going along and, and it was just business as usual with SSL, right? You, uh, most people were moving toward having SSL, but there's there's a couple of different algorithms that we're talking about. An algorithm is the way that you kind of break that up and encrypt it and, and process the encryption. So um, SSH, SHA-1 was the uh, you know, broadly accepted minimum requirement, right? And a lot of people were moving toward another standard called SSHA-256. Can we talk just briefly about kind of the, the differences there? I mean, what's, what's the main thing that you're, that you're gaining when you move from 1 to 256, right? Absolutely. Um, the the SHA-1, they only produce 160-bit uh, hashes. Mm -hmm. The SHA-256, the SHA um, they produce larger ones. And so uh, what you end up with, uh, 256 actually, mm -hmm. uh, so what you end up with is uh, generally when it comes to encryption, uh, you know, things that are, that are bigger, uh, have longer uh, bit length means that it's more secure. Uh, but in addition to the fact that it's, it's longer, there is specifically a weakness that was discovered in SHA-1, and um, this is this is not the first time this has happened. Uh, prior to uh, using SHA-1, a very common algorithm to be using was MD5, another hashing algorithm. And right. MD5 and SHA-1 are both basically based on the same uh, same idea. And since about 2005, uh, the cryptography community has actually been aware of a potential collision attack against the SHA-1 algorithm, much the same that MD5 also had this, this kind of vulnerability discovered. And um, in kind of a parallel you know, universe, um, we'd be able to get out of these situations very quickly, but the problem is that this technology is deployed so, so widely, it's, it takes a long time to get that impetus um, to move the needle on moving towards better standards. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're seeing some of the same patterns between um, the, the move away from MD5 towards SHA-1 to happen now uh, to go from SHA-1 to, to SHA-256. We've, we've known for a while, since 2005, that this is a problem, and it's only been in the last year that uh, it's, it's really started to gain momentum as uh, computing power increases the, uh, the ability for an attacker to um, forge one of these signatures and impersonate your website and grab all your customer data is increasing every, every second of the day. Well, and that's one of the things you mentioned the the last time we spoke, right, or when we were speaking earlier, right, was that um, it's not just, um, well, simply the fact that it is a popular algorithm means that a lot of people have access to it, right? And so because they've all got access to it, um, they're able to uh, hack around on it, see if they can, uh, you know, open it up and find these uh, these exploits. So it was, it was, it's an algorithm that was actually, uh, you know, proposed, uh, put out by our national um, agencies that are in charge of such standards. NIST, and um, this is something that they obviously didn't know about at the very beginning, and it's only, it's been a, a long time that it's been running around there being uh, used in software at all different layers. It's not just uh, the, the kind of TLS connections that you're making um, with, with websites, it's also an algorithm that's used in PGP signatures and in software signing signatures. So it really affects not just website operators, but at the end, uh, anybody who's trying to produce software or anybody who's trying to uh, uh, trade encrypted communications across the wire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay, so that kind of catches us up, right? And, and yeah. this is a great point to, to take a break. Uh, so we've kind of laid yeah. out what's going on. Uh, let's, let's take a break right now and welcome everybody that's watching uh, over on Periscope and on Facebook. We've had a couple of uh, uh, people that are checking in. Hi to Sully and Bino on Periscope. Uh, thank you for the mustache compliment. Appreciate that. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and everybody else that's watching, uh, we appreciate that. Keep dropping us comments. Um, we'd love to hear your questions, right? So what type of questions do you have about this, uh, this big change uh, that we're going to talk about right now? Um, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and see uh, see what that is, right? So, uh, Suzanne, tell us a little bit about this big change, right? So, right now, people have been using SHA-1 and SHA-256. We've decided that it's time to switch over to SHA-256 only. 
Yeah, and um, this is always going to be a challenge for, for any uh, company to design a strategy mm -hmm. on how to provide maximum security but also um, maximum compatibility given all of the existing clients that are out there on, on the Internet. Um, so let's just talk about what's going on with the browser side of things and TLS. In particular, Google's been kind of leading the way along with Firefox in laying out a plan, um, a release cycle that is over the course of the last year and in, in the coming year um, in a staged manner deprecating first certificates that were issued uh, that expired um, after a certain point and then um, they're kind of drawing back the, the threshold. So as the months march on, we're starting to see first uh, browser warnings if you have SHA-1 SHA uh, signed certificates, mm -hmm. and then we're going to move into just it just completely blocking these um, in 2017. So right. 2016 is really the last year that you have to take care of this problem. Get your certificates uh, rekeyed, which is often a free service mm -hmm. uh, from various TLS providers. And, um, and it's just important to understand that it's not only uh, the LEAF certificate, the one that's verifying your company, but all the intermediary bundles, the signers of signers, um, they all have to be using SHA-56.2 to avoid getting browser warnings and, um, in addition, possibly impacting your SEO. Yeah, and that's one of the things that we've talked about um, is you have that entire certificate chain, right? So it's not just... Uh, you know, is your certificate there? It has to be signed all the way up. That's what we're talking about when we say signing and, and rekeying, right? So all of those have to have to go all the way up. So um, I, I imagine that all of those those companies that provide those browser or excuse me that provide the certificate authorities, right? They are they are well on top of this, right? They definitely are, and a lot of them have specific help pages mm -hmm. designed to help you figure out what exactly is required of you at this moment and how you can get help from them to to rekey your certificate and start using the more secure hash algorithm. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. And I know that uh, Cloudflare has, has put out a lot of information on this. I mean, specifically because you are a provider for a lot of people's certificates. That's and right. We're, we're definitely uh, doing a lot of TLS connections these days. And um, one of the nice things about our service is that we've, we've pretty much take care of those details for you and um, take, take that management uh, headache out of your hands and put it into a UI and also allow you to selectively disable SHA-1 SHA if you want. Um, I'm not sure if everybody's aware of this, but Cloudflare actually uh, has provided a fallback mechanism uh, because even though it's, it's definitely time to move towards SHA-256, there are still a significant chunk of clients that are, are uh, using SHA-1. And um, the challenge for us as a technology company and, and other technology companies is how do you provide that maximum security with the SHA-256, but at the same mm -hmm. time provide some kind of fallback, um, which is exactly what we've done. So um, currently, if, you're, if your browser uh, doesn't support uh, uh, SHA-256, if you're running an old Android or XP or um, uh, you know, some other browser, I don't even know what it's called, those mm -hmm. ones uh, would actually still be able to go on a website and get the, get the lock um, they're not going to have warnings because they're not modern browsers. Modern browsers that would give you a warning if you have a SHA-1, they're going to get SHA-256. And in that way, we're just trying to balance um, that, that, uh, that, that, cha that particular challenge between providing the maximum security and, and doing the, the fallback technique. There's a few other companies that are also doing this, such as Facebook, um, I'm aware of. And um, I think in, you know, going into the future, uh, for, for companies like us, we're also going to have to, at a certain point, make a determination when it's, uh, when it's appropriate to start completely cutting off uh, SHA-1 support for our customers right. as well. Right. I mean, that, that's the thing. And that, that's, that is very interesting to me is this is something that I don't think Google wants to do. I don't think they want to put a whole bunch of people in a position to, um, to have to ch make these changes, right? I don't think they want to put an entire industry uh, in there to... Um, uh, you know, to, to make these changes. I don't think that you have, um, and, and I know that you at Cloudflare don't necessarily want to have to do this, but you have to weigh that. You have to weigh the greater security of the internet uh, against everybody else. That's right. right. We're, we're on the edge. We see a lot of different traffic. Um, so for us, we, we decided to go ahead and provide that, um, you know, the wide availability of HTTPS and then allow individual co customers of ours can go ahead um, on the paid plans and disable SHA-1 support mm -hmm. if that makes sense for them. And that's a matter of checking out your analytics. Um, this is true if you're using Cloudflare or not. You should be seeing what kind of browsers are coming to my site, what kind of market share, what kind of click-through rate are these. Right. And also consider the, the content of your sites. If, um, if, you're, if you're 
if you're putting out information that's relevant to those in certain countries that still maintain a high percentage rate of, um, of uh, older Android use, many of these countries yeah. are very repressive, have mer very repressive regimes, and it would be concerning to only offer people in these situations information only over plain text, knowing that there could potentially be somebody looking over your shoulder examining all the content you're looking at. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and that's the that's the unfortunate <laughs> reality is that in the places where the um, you know where the, where those older versions of Android are you know still have that predominant market share, they're also the the most vulnerable as far as you know as as far as uh, you know regimes that are that are going to be interested in in what you're saying. So yeah, um, yeah, it's definitely there. Um, yeah, so so that's hopefully that will, uh, you know, we, we can get everybody onto a better standard and it'll be there. Um, one thing you mentioned that I'd like to kind of dive into a little bit more is, is it might actually impact your SEO, right? So let's talk about that and how it could potentially be a, you know, detrimental to your search engine optimization if you don't have a good, um, a good handle on, um, a, a good handle on, on the SSL certificate that you're using, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, we know for certain that Google has started um, ranking sites higher that are utilizing HTTPS. What is a little bit more of a, of a, of a, of a, a point of contention is mm -hmm. uh, whether the nature of your certificate can um, perhaps draw your rankings down. Currently, we don't have that much public information about it. It's, it's speculation, but certainly uh, people are going to start linking less and less to sites that present warnings in them. And, of course, uh, having a network of links to your site is one of the, the primary reasons that you are ranked higher in Google. Yeah, and that's one of the things you want to see. You want to have that. You want to have that trust there, and that's why. I mean, that's why they call it trust certificates. And you know, yeah. I mean, you want to have that trust there. And if you don't have it, um, you know, Google might or might not be playing with it that way. But I mean, at the very least, it's going to uh, be a perception issue for you. So, um, yeah. definitely, definitely, a, a, you know, something we want to want to stay on top of and, and be there. And that's why we're doing this right now. So we want to make sure that if we do have any, uh, any customers with questions, we can actually uh, work on that and try to try to get that, um, get that taken care of now before it's actually an issue. Um, all right. So let's, and, always, and also to keep in mind that uh, who cares how high your rankings are if, if a customer or potential customer clicks on your site and sees a browser warning about your SSL certificate, right. they're unlikely to click through. They're going to go. They're going to go away. <laughs> they're right. going to go away. <laughs> yeah, it's something that's definitely, uh, definitely difficult. So we want to make sure that it is that you know that uh, that we do all that we can to to get everybody informed and ready to go. Um, all right, well, let's take a real quick minute to um, uh, to welcome everybody that's watching on Facebook and on Periscope. Uh, thanks everybody that's uh, trying to help us with the audio. I really apologize on this. I think we got the audio issues figured out here. We're working on making that better for you. Um, but um, th thanks for tuning in here to Rackspace, the number one managed cloud company for our weekly office hours hangout. Um, uh, my name is Alan Bush. Uh, my special guest is Suzanne Aldrich from Cloudflare. She is the disembodied voice that you can only <laughs> see over on ohpodcast.com. Um, and uh, she is uh, talking to us about the big changes in uh, Google's uh, search and Google's, um, excuse me, uh, Google's uh, uh, Chrome browser, right? The way that they display uh, encrypted sites that are using the older SHA-1 uh, algorithm, right? Um, and, and really, honestly, we, we should mention that this is something that's not, um, like you have to go out of your way to get an SHA-1 browser or a SSL certificate at this point in time. Um, yeah. These are ones that people bought like multiple year um, licenses or multiple year certificates and, and they still have those, right? And mm -hmm. so it, it's really also based on the expiration that, uh, that you're going to see, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, they, they decided to kind of phase in these warnings on, on the Chrome browser uh, release by release, there, there's uh, several different places you can refer to uh, what happened when. But essentially, uh, you're right, people should, are uh, responsible CAs are not issuing uh, SHA-1s anymore. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have heard of a few exceptions here and there. They're, they're, uh, they're made for uh, reasons that can be found on the uh, CAB forum. That's the mailing list uh, mm -hmm. where a lot of these kinds of um, these decisions are discussed and also exceptions. And um, it's just really important to note that the first round of deprecation was for certificates that were issued to expire after 2017. Uh, so those are the kinds of websites 
um, that you would first have seen warnings on. Um, this is the year where uh, uh, sites that have SHA-1 uh, expiring this year, you're going to start seeing warnings as well, and no feature certificates should be issued. And as you mentioned, um, typically people will purchase these certificates for many years. Partly, I think that's because of the uh, the, the lack of ease of use of administering SSL certificates mm -hmm. for all kinds of software. It's just easier to get them issued for you know multiple years and then install them and hopefully set it and forget it. But in, unfortunately in this case, if you set up a SHA-1 cert certificate, you can't forget it. Uh, you're going to have to go in there and, um, as we, we were talking about just uh, before, get that, get that guy rekeyed um, through your existing provider or yeah. um, you know, get a new certificate. Yep, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Um, all right. So um, now let's talk about a little bit about what uh, Cloudflare is doing uh, to, to make this work. Because this is something that, you know, what is, it's been about a year since you guys have launched your, um, you know, universal SSL for everybody, right? It's been a bit more than a year now. I think we're up, okay. up to, yeah, I think it's been up to about a year and a half. Um, okay. so, so we actually, so it's interesting. Our universal SSL already utilizes SHA-256 yeah. and, and SNI technologies, which are a modern way of being able to pick um, which SAN prior to going on and making the communication. And SNI technologies were around because uh, people wanted to host multiple websites at one IP. And so um, it became necessary to kind of pass that host name along to choose which certificate right. um, to, to do the encryption on. And so by, by default, all of our free customers already are protected. Um, moving into paid customers, there are a lot of people um, who, uh, you know, are using our ECDSA certificates, which are SHA-256. Those ones are mm -hmm. um, smaller, so that means that it takes less time to transmit all the bits across for those particular certificates and um, they encrypt sm smaller packages so that, that's a, a bandwidth savings. Um, we also have SHA-256 RSA certificates and um, you know again those are very compatible with most browsers. Um, the bulk of browsers will support those and then that fallback I mentioned um, we have been able to issue those up to a certain point for customers that's to provide for our fallback mechanism while um, this whole process kind of wends its way through the web. And um, those, those particular certificates um, can actually be disabled with the push of a button, uh, and you can just use the first two of our bundled package uh, with, your, with your paid site. Um, the, other, the other certificate, the SHA-1, won't be used for any kind of encryption. And then that means that you won't have that possibility of somebody perhaps forging that making it look like they're, uh, they've got a valid certificate for your domain, perhaps um, you know, getting traffic to move over to their particular endpoint. That's, that's a man in the middle of the attack. That's what we're really yeah. trying to avoid for our customers. And um, at this point, it's gotten, to the, uh, gotten so cheap to mount one of these attacks. I mean, they started off with about uh, $700 million, or sorry, $700,000 to it to launch one of these attacks. Over the course of the last few years, it's gotten down to about $43,000, maybe even less, um, depending on the hardware that you use. For example, if you were using a, a GPU, um, then you could possibly perform one of these collision attacks against the SHA-1 certificate. So um, just because we know that this is a matter of urgency and certain customers are going to uh, really require um, you know, perfect forward secrecy and, and strong encryption, uh, we've, we've definitely allowed them to self-choose when, when they disable that fallback for themselves. Great. Great. Um, we had a question on Facebook uh, from Andrew um, about uh, Microsoft. So we've been talking a lot about, um, about Google. I think we mentioned Firefox before. What about um, Microsoft and their, uh, I guess, IE and now the Edge browser, right? And then also Bing. Are, do you know if they're making any changes uh, where this is concerned? Yeah, um, as far as as far as I can see, Microsoft is falling along uh, the trailing a little bit behind Chrome as far as um, the complete deprecation. Mm -hmm. But the first thing they're going to do is deprecate software signing certificates. So that's that's really okay. going to uh, affect people who are using um, these kinds of certificates for software signing. Uh, the next step after that is going to be very similar to Google. Um, there's a little bit less information available about that, but currently um, the the you know the Edge browser. Um, that supports SHA-2, doesn't show, it's not SHA-1 friendly, and um, going into the future, um, we expect that um, the main three browsers, Microsoft Edge, Firefox, and Chrome, um, they're going to continue to clamp down on this. It's just becoming really um, imperative that 
everybody moves away from this technology and these guys are really being um, leaders at the forefront to yeah. um, help users uh, coerce them, I suppose, um, into the right direction. <laughs> Well, that, that's kind of a conversation that I've heard before is that is that Google was more than just helping them, that they were coercing, uh, you know, customers and, and really users that, that weren't necessarily their customers into, uh, you know, choosing a new technology that might be a little bit difficult for them to implement. Um, it, it's one of those very difficult things, and I, I can't even imagine what went into that conversation, you know, to try to figure out if, if you're going to, um, if you know, at what point do you want to, turn this off? How long do you need to run it out? And they've given over a year and a half for people to get this, uh, to get this set up. So, I mean, I think that they're handling it pretty well. And they, I think that the, the overall uh, net benefit to, uh, to the internet in general is going to be so much better down the road. So yeah, I think it will I think be, it, it will right be. Way. Yeah, agreed. I mean, um, you, if you didn't do it the right way, you would end up with a risk of something that happened. Like, uh, at one point F Firefox or sorry, a, a Mozilla, uh, offered their website, um, under SHA-2 only, and um, during that period of time, they actually uh, lost a number of, of downloads um, so they could track that with analytics. I really think that data is your best friend when it yeah. comes to making these decisions. Exactly. <laughs> they, ended no, up, they ended up switching back to SHA-1 you know, temporarily just because of that issue. And so <laughs> even, for these, even for these people, it's a really, if it's hard for us, you know, it's also hard for them. That just goes to show what a difficult problem it is. Right, exactly. Yeah, we will... Uh, we will uh, always push people toward data. You know, that's something that we're always going to, always going to celebrate is, is having more data. So that's going to be, um, you know, that's going to be one way that we can do it. Uh, or one, one thing that we're always going to recommend. Um, all right. Well, hey, thank you, Andrew, for that question. Uh, anybody else that's out there that's watching us live, uh, please go ahead and, and drop in your questions as well. Uh, we've had a few people that are uh, more, a few more people watching and checking in on, on Facebook and Periscope. Uh, Vancouver Brent, hey, thank you for uh, for stopping in on Periscope and saying uh, that it's helpful. And as a web developer, this is absolutely something that you need to make sure that you are uh, very well aware of. And this is exactly why we're doing this. We want to make sure that we help all of our customers and all of Cloud Flares customers and everybody that's using the web have all of the information that they need to uh, to make the right decisions and, and build something that's going to work for them. So that's good. Yep. Please uh, please keep those questions coming. Really appreciate it. Um, all right. So let's see. Hey Tyler, can you show that uh, that uh, image that we were looking at earlier that kind of show the different browsers? I want to just kind of go over some of the different uh, browsers because uh, several different browsers have different. Uh, compatibility. And those of you that are watching on ohpodcast.com, you can check that out. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see this as well. But let's talk about the ones that, that are that are not going to work out very well. Let's start with that. So <laughs> in, old versions of Android, um, Windows XP, uh, Service Pack 2, and um, if you're running OpenSSL, like version 0 0.9.8, uh, those are the ones that are only friendly with SHA1, right? Yeah. That's correct. Um, if, you, if you're running one of these browsers and you're trying to visit a site that's got uh, a SHA-256 compatible mm -hmm. uh, certificate, then you're going to have a problem. It's basically going to air out on you. And, um, and that's, that's exactly this transitionary problem. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so then we have some in the in the middle that are going to uh, work well with both, right? And that's up until uh, they finally pull the cord on that, right? So we're talking about older versions of Chrome, older versions of Firefox, uh, Safari, and Opera. Those are going to those are going to work with both of them. Um, and then the latest versions of Edge and the latest versions of um, uh, the latest versions of Edge and the latest versions of IE and, or not IE, uh, of uh, Chrome and Firefox, they're only working with SHA-256. Mm -hmm. yep. That's correct. Um, yep, yeah, there you go. So, um, all right, so those are there. So th the one thing we got to worry about is, is you know, the people that are that are using only Windows XP, you know, Service Pack 2, something like that. Those are the ones that are, um, you know, there's there's not much you can do other than upgrade. Right, and and if you're running on older systems, older Android, older uh, Windows XP, right, which has been, that's been about a year since they finally, <laughs> finally sunset that. But um, there's not much you can do on those, right, because they are. are not that's where, that's uh, correct. It's it's coming to the end of the line um, for these operating systems to be able to browse uh, the internet securely, let alone do anything else securely. I'm not sure uh, what the what the date is for deprecation of XP, but um, I imagine. Uh, that there's got to be fewer and fewer users of this. 
I will note that um, there probably is a fairly large install base in certain areas where that install base has uh, is been pirated. Uh, yeah. So people who are using pirated copies of operating systems are going to be SOL in the, in, in, in coming in the next year. Yeah, that's too bad. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that is not genuine, uh, genuine sadness on their behalf. So, uh, um, cool. oh, hey, it looks like over here on Facebook, Colin just dropped in a link to uh, to Windows and their and their statement on SHA one deprecation. So, uh, right. looks like they're it looks like they're all over it as well. I mean, this is something that everybody's working on, and everybody's trying to make sure that that they keep their customers up to date, and they don't want to lose large portions of the internet. So they're really working hard to make that work. Yeah. Um, uh, yep. So that's that. Uh, let's see. Do we have any other questions? Um, all right, cool. Um, well, hey, Suzanne, what else are we missing? What, what else do we want to make sure that our customers know? Can you tell us a little bit about how uh, Cloudflare uh, themselves, are, how, how you guys over there are uh, getting your customers uh, what they need? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, you know, we, we've also encountered another issue. Um, this, is, this is related in, in something maybe to, to follow up on, which is uh, TLS, uh, the standard itself, is also changing, and it's getting to the point where it's unwise to be running sites under TLS 1.0 or 1.1, and um, you, you want to start moving towards uh, 1.2. So in conjunction with the, the SHA-1 deprecation, we're also seeing the, the TLS sub 1.2 deprecation. It's, a, it's really tough. Um, companies are going to start having to do TLS 1.2 only to maintain PCI 3.1 compliance um, in the future. They've, they've kind of moved around the, the sunset date on that a bit. I'm sure that the difficulty of everybody um, in transitioning has led to some of that decision making. But, you know, the time is, is clocking down and it's, it's really um, important for people to get serious about how they're managing their crypto um, and not just their certificates but also the protocols they're using across the wire. Yeah, yep. Um, yes, so the TLS 1.2, um switch over that's happening right now uh with uh, and, and very soon actually with um specifically paypal is one of the big ones that is making mm -hmm. this change but i think a lot of people are are following along i, I think that they kind of did the same thing that, that google is doing they're saying look you know someone has to go first somebody has to be there to make this change and make it happen so um you know paypal is changing the way that they accept encryption and uh, servers that don't uh, use that tls 1.2 um, standard, they're they're not going to have a secure connection anymore. So, um, I mean, there there is some changes that people need to do if you ha if you're running an older version of, um, you know, of an operating system that doesn't that doesn't handle or doesn't allow for using TLS 1.2. Well, then you're going to need to upgrade your operating system, update your servers and everything. Um, we've got a great guide over at um, over at the Rackspace community community.rackspace.com, uh, and we've got kind of some step by step instructions for for checking to see if you're impacted by that and what you can do afterwards. So, um, you know, there, there's all types of changes that are happening industry-wide um, around encryption, around uh, security, and keeping your users safe. I mean, that's, that's really what it comes down to is um, you need to protect the user data that you have. You need to be able to make sure that your users are are, are protected, and there's, there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can do that, and we're really coming together and narrowing that down into in really pushing people to use only the best, the most appropriate ways to do that. Yep. It's yep. exactly what Very we want to do. Exactly <laughs> what we want to do. I mean, I'm, I'm hearing that it's getting to the point where the, uh, the Internet uh, Engineering Task Force doesn't even want to produce any more protocols in the future that are plain text. Uh, so it's getting to the point where um, encrypting all the things is, is become... Um, not just a technological issue, but a social issue. Mm -hmm. And um, over the last few years, as we've we've heard some revelations about, um, for example, how various nation states uh, could be spying on our traffic, I think it's also become more incumbent upon businesses to take care about um, their data storage, their you know data at rest, and their data in transit encryption needs. Yeah, that's the yeah in, in, encryption at rest is something we've been we've you know everybody <laughs> wants to get that one done right um, yeah. so we gotta we gotta do that um, it, we've we've actually got a couple of things that we're that we're working on and uh, you know I know that uh, some of our um, some of our other guests have talked about that a little bit I won't uh, I won't steal any of their thunder there um, <laughs> yep. great topic great topic 
Exactly. So, um, you know, on that note, I think we're just going to go ahead and, and, and wrap this up, Suzanne. I mean, this is a, a pretty uh, pretty straightforward conversation. And I think that the, the main message that we want to get out uh, is double check your certificates. See where you're at. If you uh, are not using an SHA-256 encryption, uh, you need to upgrade your certif certificates, get them keyed, uh, get them resigned, and, and, and reset that, and do it soon so that you are able to uh, continue to uh, continue to protect your privacy and your customers' privacy. Yep. Can't say I disagree with any of that. <laughs> all right. All right. And uh, and again, just to mention that uh, that you're already taken care of. If, if Cloudflare is one of your, uh, is your SSL provider, you guys have done a great job to get everybody up and running. So uh, you're good to go there. But uh, if you're on another, uh, if you have another certificate provider, just double check that and take the necessary steps that you need. Um, all right. So great. Hey, we're going to go ahead and, and say goodbye. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, really... Um, uh, really appreciate all the comments that we had on Periscope and on Facebook, and um, uh, re really appreciate that. If you're watching this in the future, hey, how, how's it going? Tell me, uh, tell me <laughs> if they made those hoverboards yet. But um, uh, you can go ahead and drop us a line. Uh, you know, you can uh, leave a comment uh, wherever you're watching, Facebook, Periscope, or um, or YouTube, and we'll be more than happy to answer your questions there. Um, Suzanne, I think that we can pass uh, questions along to you if, if anybody has any questions for you. But uh, it's... Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, we really appreciate our friends at Cloudflare. You guys have been uh, great partners with us uh, for a very long time and, and uh, have a great working relationship with you all. So we, we love having you on. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll see everybody next week when we are talking a little bit more about uh, our next generation of fanatical support for Microsoft Azure platform. So that should be a really fun one. Uh, we do this every week, and we hope to see you next week. Bye, everybody.